What is the Bison V3000 workstation? Simply put, it's a custom built PC that is pre-built per your build to order specification needs and wants. I've worked with Bison in the past to bring you coverage on their eGPU chassis. Now Bison is stepping into the world of building you a custom PC. Let's go ahead and talk about specifications of this system. Then I wanna hop into some price and performance comparisons as they relate to the baseline iMac Pro. The V3000 is built using a Fantex Evolve Shift case. In that is Intel's Core i7 8700K 6 core, 3.7 gigahertz, a CPU that is overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, clocked in at 2666 megahertz, a 500 gigabyte Samsung Evo 960 main drive and Bison includes includes a two terabyte secondary drive at no additional cost. And in the NVIDIA RTX 2080 graphics card, this is the eight gigabyte variant that is being showcased in this video for you. Latest GPUs like the RTX 2080 and the 2080 Ti have the ability to provide users with CUDA support. And it's not just those two cards, it's NVIDIA in general. And with Adobe's Mercury playback engine, performance acceleration is available. iMac Pro comes with AMD GPUs, which Apple has a tendency to throttle performance to avoid overheating. All of that is being powered using Corsair's uh, 600 watt power supply. Each personal workstation that buys and builds is put through a pretty good amount of stress tests and benchmarks before they send it out. And now all that is included in a personal report that is sent out with each order. This is good for peace of mind in my opinion because you want to know that your system will be fully functional outside of the box. It's also important to mention upgradability. With the iMac Pro, and I use the word pro lightly here, you can upgrade certain components, but doing something simple like upgrading your RAM means you have to completely disassemble the entire workstation. Take off the screen, which gets, which means getting through that adhesive and having to repurchase adhesive and pulling out the logic board and then being careful and not breaking it. But doing this voids your warranty with Apple. And in a world of professional use, that downtime and system limitation is something some professional customers may not want to deal with or, you know, just simply can't. Because with the V3000, I simply pop off a side panel and can get access to everything, every single component. Bison also offers CPU overclocking at an additional cost as well. I have mixed feelings about charging customers for what seems to be like a simple process, but understand the business of having to charge for it because you're tying up one of your technicians time to complete the task. I'd still like to see Bison offer this option at lesser or no additional cost. You're really only getting at most 400 megahertz more performance uh, out of your machine, but they're charging quite a bit of money for it. One thing to note, uh, the system is being shown in this video is a six core CPU that is overclocked to match uh, similar performance compared to the baseline iMac Pro eight core. RGB lighting is included in this build and is something that I personally don't like. In all honesty, it makes the system look too much of uh, like a toy for my taste, but they build it in with RGB light that can be switched on and switched off with a simple click of a button. Now let's get into some comparisons with the Biza V3000 to the baseline iMac Pro. The V3000 uh, pictured in this video will run you about $3,300. One thing to keep in mind though, is that you will have to purchase an additional monitor. So add that to the cost, depending on which monitor you go with. As for the iMac Pro, MSRP for it is $4,999. Time to compare the performance of these machines. Before we get into real world benchmarks, let's talk a little bit about Geekbench and Cinebench so we can lay a bit of a foundation among the two systems with synthetic benchmarks. I ran each one of these tests three times and took the the best result of the three from each one of the systems. In Geekbench, the V3000's 8th Gen 8700K CPU scored a respectable 5530 in the single core department and 26,061 in the multi-core performance. The iMac Pro is a bit slower in the single core performance, having scored a 5310, but it really starts to run away from the V3000 in the multi-core department, scoring a 32,192. Moving along to the GPU testing, uh, compute within Geekbench 4. The RTX uh, 2080 does extremely well, recording a mass of 291,211, as the Vegas 56 uh, scored about half of that at 158,936. On to Cinebench, the V3000's i7 CPU holds up pretty well in comparison to the iMac Pro Xeon 
on processor scoring a 14, 13, and a 16, 19 respectively. Again, the RTX shows its power by scoring 138 frames per second, while the Vega 56 brings home a respectable 120 frames per second. Now on to the Premiere Pro project or the real world testing that I wanted to see how each of these systems stood up to one another in an editing fluidity and rendering performance. I took a six and a half minute sequence and edited it down into my timeline using 4K footage that was shot in 60 frames per second from my Canon C200, which was in the MP4 format. So a much more compressed codec. They had the exact same transition, video effects and color grades to each one of the sequences or timelines. And I wanted to see how fluid they were. I will say both compared nearly identical. However, the iMac Pro had less drop frames from my experience. The V3000 rendered that timeline in a 12 minutes and 54 seconds while the iMac Pro did it in 11 minutes and 41 seconds. So roughly 11% better rendering performance on the iMac Pro. Taking the project into Adobe Media Encoder will really show the differences in CPU performance as uh, the project was exported to a standard YouTube 4K preset with a bit of adjustment as I bumped up the megabits per second to 85 up from 40. The results were not surprising at all. The V3000 took 17 minutes and 44 seconds while the iMac Pro did the same task in 8 minutes and 30 seconds, which is about 50 2% better on the iMac Pro. This result is due to the CPU differences between the two machines. Media Encoder is a primarily a CPU intensive application that really ramps up your CPU and uses it. In all of this testing, neither of the system's fans really spinned up on me to be loud enough to even bother me. They both are extremely quiet machines and would fit nicely into a sound sensitive environment. So keep that in mind. So here's the deal. I understand that you can build your own PC and all that jazz, but Bison is offering a pretty sweet service with not that much of a markup. To me, if I were going to make the jump to Windows and PC world, I would go the Bison PC build route. They offer V5000 and V7000 options, which give you a ton of different ways to build your own PC without having to actually build it yourself. Additionally, they have a plethora of different GPUs, CPUs, RAM, and storage options available to you that could really give you what it is you need from your machine and the performance that you are in need of. With Bison PC and their services that they're offering, I can now go that route because I can zero in on my specification needs of a workstation. If you're interested in checking out uh, all of their different build options and you know kind of uh, seeing what it would cost you to build your own thing, hit the link in the description. Before I close, I must disclose Bison was kind enough to lend me the V3000 for testing and review. So without them, this video would not have been possible. I wanted to take an opportunity to showcase to you a service that is available. If you're interested in shopping with them, there's a $100 discount code in the description of this video. Bison was kind enough to hook me up with that as well in return for this video review. Well, that about does it for me in this one. If you like this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I am Tomas and I will catch you in the next one.